All right, you guys, Dave Man Man 6. <clears throat> and we, it is uh, Saturday morning, early, uh, beautiful Saturday in Culver City at Six Packs Gym. Our good buddy CS Gym's here. Thanks Absolutely. for having us, man. Absolutely welcome. Welcome back, Dave. We love having you guys here. So you guys, we have this brand new series sponsored by House of Pain. Everybody knows House of Pain. They've been around forever. They are coming back in a big way. And we have this new series that Sia was nice enough to invite us for. And we're gonna call it Training with the Legends. So Sia, tell me a little bit about, about that. Absolutely. I have, a, of course, the first one is Mr. Tom Platts uh, coming and teaching us how to train leg. And I thought about this, you know, this uh, legend being around and they're the one that who started it. So I love, to, I love them to pass it on to young people. So and my gym is all about being old school by the attitude and these guys had it and I'm having Tom Platz as a first person, so one of the best. That is awesome. So it is literally a House of Pain, sponsored by House of Pain Clothing. So today we have Tom Platz, but you have uh, you have a lot in the pipeline also. Absolutely. Tell me a few about some of the people that you Actually, think you're having. Upcoming people are Mr. Samir Benut, Mr. Olympia 1983, uh, Robbie Robinson, the Black Prince, wow. and of course Chris Gourmier. So these are the three for now. Wow. For the next, hopefully next few weeks, and we're gonna have them. Oh, you guys. So we're gonna get you guys started with the, the Golden Eagle Tom Tom Platz today. Make sure to catch this series on Digital Muscle, sponsored by House of Pain at Six Packs Gym. The first one of many you guys think for watching. Let's do this. You know, when yep. you, go, you go to a pool hall and then you see a guy bring in a pool, his own pool, pool cue, you go, this, this guy is probably pretty good, right? <laughs> I have my own bar. I bring in my gym. Hey, there you, you know, go. I learned that from those guys. That's how the pro do it. I guess. I used to fit this in my Volkswagen too. Really? Oh, yeah. Did it come enough. out through a roof? Well, I, put, I put the top down and it fit in. <laughs> like a surfer, except it's a it's an Olympic bar. You want to do something bad enough, you'll figure a way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, look at the surfer. surfer that's right. Surfboard. That's right. They don't rent one there or use somebody else. That's right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Hi guys, we're uh, in Culver City here at Six Packs Gym with Matt. Matt, you came for the Tom Platt seminar? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, man? San Diego, Boston. Wow. And why did you come for this? To kill legs. To kill legs? Yeah, train with the legend. Oh my god, that's awesome. Exactly. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, we're here with Bo. Bo, man, you came for the Tom Platt seminar? Absolutely. And where did you come from? Uh, here. Okay, I can, the, the I can. Six Pack Gym is my turf. This is where I scream at the mayor. This is where I do what I do three days a week. Wow. With Savash. How excited were you when you heard Tom Black was coming here and giving a seminar? I was very excited. Yeah? Are you excited for today? You may be less excited when you leave. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping to be in a lot of blissful pain by yeah. the end of this. All right, hopefully you get your buddy's worth. Absolutely. All right. All right, we're here with Tim. Tim, where are you coming from, man? Temecula. Yeah, and you came for? Yeah, Tom Platt seminar. Yeah, and how'd you hear about it? I saw it on uh, Tom's uh, Instagram. Oh, okay, very, very cool. Have you been a, f a fan of Tom for a long time? Uh, since I started lifting, yeah. How old are you? I'm 20. Oh my God, so how long have you started lifting? For about five years. Yeah? yeah. So now you came to learn from, from the legend himself. Yeah, from the best. Are yeah. you excited? I'm very excited. I'm, uh, I hope you have a good time today. Thank you. All right, we're here with a young guns, man. 16-year-old Alex. Alex, welcome, man. Okay, thank you. You came to train with? Uh, you, Tom Plass. Yeah, Tom Plass, man. And you're from here, you're around yes, here, sir. right? Culver City? Yes. And you're only 16 years old? Yes. Man, I would have loved to learn from Tom Plass at 16 year old. Yeah, future star. Uh -huh. What do you want to be, man? You want to be a bodybuilder? Uh, I want to be a, a professional football player. Actually. Professional football? Oh, okay, very, very cool. So, are you excited about today? Yes, I am. Very yeah? Good. All right, man. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Hi guys, we're here with Cruz all the way from Vegas, man. Cruz, yeah, buddy. nice to see you, buddy. Nice to and see you. And you did the drive all this way to train with Tom today. Yes, this is a one-time life, you know. Lifetime opportunity, yeah. huh? You wow. Can that. And you're gonna come and get some motivation for what? What are you doing next, man? I'm getting ready for the USA one more time. Wow, Just USA in program. July, end of July. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah. Are you excited about today? Oh yes. Yeah. Let's see how we're doing today. All right, man. Well, I hope you're not too. Uh, you're hurting too much going back to Vegas. Cause <laughs> it'll be painful. Yeah, yeah, that's right. the idea, bro. N nice to see you, Chris. Nice to see you, Dave. Yeah. Right, another loyal, uh, faithful from the Six Packs gym, Alex. You here for the Tom Platt seminar, man? Oh uh, yes. How excited are you about having this legend over uh, here, man? I've been thinking about it all week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome for Cito and nice guys, huh? To have yes. these guys. Are very, very cool. You train here all the time. This is your home gym. Yes, I yeah? consider this to be my home gym. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Uh, we appreciate you. it. This, you know. The squatting, the gym, and sailish, that's, that's my home. That's what I know best in life. That's who I am. I'll never erase that. I thought about this this morning. I'm thinking, and, and Sean, uh, a good friend of Savish is Sean. He's a high finance guy. He's into you know, the, 
Rolex watches and the suits and he's done been very successful in life. I'm, I'm playing that game now. I put, I put the suit on every day, I go to the office and I, but the same mentality that worked in the gym for those 40 years in squatting, I take to the office and you know what? I can kick butt in the office. And I, I don't really know what Sean knows, but the attitude, we were just talking about this before too. Yeah. Most guys think about you know, what to take, and what to eat, and they forget about what to think. I mean, when I first won the universe in 78, a long time ago, before you were born, I knew nothing about what I was doing. I was some new kid out here on the block, you know, and I was around the very best in the world. You know, corny, zane, Robbie. Uh, you know, just to mention a few, and uh, that I won the universe knowing nothing about how to get there. I just knew I had to do it. I had to do it or I'm gonna die. And I was willing to give it that much. Somehow it came together and I pulled it off and I won the universe. Then when I learned what to do, and how to eat, and nutrition and all that stuff, uh, it, it, how to train properly, it came together, but nothing replaces your belief system. Your belief system to where you know, you know for sure that you're willing to go the distance to get there. I mean, the only difference between me and everybody in this room is that I wanted it more. I mean, I was willing to die for it. I, I would do whatever it took. I was an 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid out of college, came out here, 50 bucks on a plane ticket, and tomorrow I'm training at Gold's Gym, and you know what, Arnold was there, Robbie was there, and I had to do it, I had to do it. There was no plan B. I sort of had a plan B, but I really didn't believe in it. You know, I had a couple of degrees, I could be a teacher, I talked to the school district, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be like everybody else. And I wanted to be a bodybuilder. And that was my plan in life. And through the grace of God, he allowed me to fulfill what I wanted to do. I wasn't blessed with great genetics. I didn't have you know, small waist and big shoulders. I wasn't six foot five. Uh, but you know what? Um, I wasn't even competing with anyone else. I was trying to beat that guy, Tom Platts, every day. If I had to challenge Tom Platts, whatever he did, I could do better. You know, and that was what I did. That's all I did. And now 40 years later, here we are talking about the, the old days. And, and it's kind of, you know, it, it's, it's meaningful to me to talk about the old days, but the same attitude, I'm taking to the office every day and it's working there too. So when I talk to 20 year olds and 30 year olds, I talk about the mentality first. Forget about the technique and how to do this. And the, the, if you want something bad enough, you can do it. If you want something bad enough, you can do it. I firmly believe that. Um, and Tom, yeah. would you say, I was actually gonna ask you that question, <laughs> what made you who you are, meaning Tom Plaza? There's not, you know, there's a lot of bodybuilders out there, there was a lot in the old days, there's a lot today, but very few people have achieved the status of legend in our sport, such as yourself. So well, thanks. would you say that's, that's that mentality that made you who you are? Okay. Well, mentality is everything. Yeah. Your belief system. When everybody else says no, you could never. You don't have the genetics. There's a few guys I knew back in Detroit when I was in college. They would, when I was leaving for California, they, they shook my hand. They said, "We'll see you in the magazines." And I said, "You betcha." <laughs> and I, I knew it was going to come true. I was. It was like we all came out here. You have to realize this. We all came out here from different parts of the world in the 70s and the 60s, like anointed zombies. You know that that movie, Night of the Living Dead. Everybody walks like that. We all came out here. We left our families. We left high paying jobs. We left everything we had to, to come to Gold's Gym to train together. And it was like, that's all we cared about. And the beach was in the, we had no suntan beds. We went to the beach for three hours after the two hour workout. That was part of the mentality, you know? But, and it's amazing to think about that. You know, we all migrated from different parts of the world to be here because we knew it was that important to us and we're willing to sacrifice anything to do it. And I was, I'll admit, I was a bit insane. But you gotta be a little bit insane to do this. You can't be normal. You can't be like, well, I'm gonna run a business also and I'm gonna get married and have kids too. And you can be that guy. There's gotta be a switch, go click. Now you're crazy in the gym. You will do anything. You will die. You're willing to die to get there. And then click. Hi, honey, how are you? You know, you have to be able to do that. And that's the only difference between me and a guy that didn't make it, you know? Uh, I can see that clearly. And uh, it's, so, it's a lot of fun to look back and 
think about you know hindsight's always 2020 but those are the things I did right and it wasn't just me it was I mean, it was my destiny I mean, it was I often think and I thought about this this morning over my coffee I could have went to Princeton hmm. I could have went to an Ivy League college I could have uh, you know had a high paying corporate position would I and I could have played golf maybe professional golf maybe that would have been my answer but you know it wasn't then now I look back and I think, you know, I love pro golf. Oh, what, what a sport. I just love the mentality there. Uh, I like the fact when I talk to Sean and guys in the corporate world and finance, and when I talk to some of my mentors, Vince McMahon and even Donald Trump, I love the attitude. But you know what? When I talk to these guys, they all look at me and they go, God, I'd love to have your life. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? And I think about their life. Like, That's, and so it's always you know, greener on the other side of the fence but I love to put myself in uncomfortable situations to where I have to figure it out, have to learn. 1977, coming out here with 50 bucks and a plane ticket. Uh, going into the corporate world at age 50, going, all right, I worked in the gym, I'm gonna apply it in the corporate. And you know something, I can, I can run circles around these 20 and 30 year olds. I can kill them, you know? And it's, 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 like, it's the same thing, there's competitive atmosphere, there's caffeine, there's corporate politics, the same way it is in the gym and in the, the world of body. But you have to make it work for you rather than against you. You can't get bitter, you can't get upset, you say, oh, I could have if, you know, there's no excuse. You're in control. You're, we are all causative in what happens to us. We are causative. And you have to realize, even if something doesn't go your way, you lose the show. I lost many shows. I lost more shows than I won. People forgot about that. Okay? I remember in 1978, I lost to Mr. America. And I'm thinking, I think I'm going to get a job now. I'm like, oh, God, do I have to get a real job? I don't want to do that. I was handing out beach towels on the beach, you know. And then all of a sudden, the guy who uh, Tony Pearson won that year, and then uh, Ron Tufu, who was the proposed winner, got pissed off and called the judges' names and walked off stage. And all the judges looked at me and said, and I'm like, it's my turn. It's my, I knew it was my turn. You know, they whispered in my ear, you know, get in the pose down. And I went to the universe. I lost to Mr. America, went to the universe, and won the universe and turned pro in 79, and competed in my first Olympia. I wasn't oh. supposed to be that guy. I wasn't the, the weeders guy he brought out here and said, hey, he, he's the guy that's going to do it. He's going to be it. I'm going to mold it. I just wanted it so bad that I told the universe, excuse me, this is my destiny. I know it. And you know what? Because of that belief system, it happened. And I thank God every day for that. I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for that. When I, when I get on the phone and I talk to a multi-billionaire, you know, you're a little bit uneasy. I'm talking to the President of the United States or Vince McMahon, you know. But you know what gives me strength? The fact that I was able to hear and squat here and go to the point where I couldn't do five more and I got five more and then got even five more. There's always five more. The fact that I could do that gave me so much strength in life I'm in, I'm in total respect and honor of the squat rack forever. It's, it's my altar. It's what taught me how to get there. And I, it, it works in every business, in every phase of life. And that's what we talked about this morning. Tom, it's so great that you actually take the time to teach, you know, the younger generation. And we have people coming all the way from Vegas, Temecula, you know, locally. Um, what do you want them to take out of this? What's, what's your message or your best advice for them? I, I think the younger the 20s and 30 year olds, they forgot about what it takes. It doesn't matter what you take and how much and what you eat. It matters about your belief system and your willingness to give it everything you have. Nobody trains hard anymore. I said that when I first came out. Then I was around Menser, Vieter. You know what, these guys train super hard. I was there, my, I'm like, wow. They can move five and 600 pounds for reps and I'm a 19 year old kid going, that's it, that's the answer. And uh, then you look at Ronnie Coleman, another practitioner of that. He was trained by a guy that I trained. Okay? The mentality has to be there and you have to, I think people need to realize that it's not going to happen by chance. You have to make it happen, you have to will it to happen, you have to want it to happen more than anything in your life and you're willing to give your life for it. I mean not to where you take it, you no, know, you die, but you're willing to give it that much. If something doesn't have an inherent risk, it's not worth taking. I mean an inherent expectation of success like last weekend. I did 30 reps and I was just starting back. I had to put two and a quarter on to 30 reps. It took me till Wednesday to recover. And I'm thinking I'm 62 years old. And I'm walking and saving. I'm like walking around Tuesday morning going, man, I'm not recovered yet. I'm dying. And I'm thinking, what am I doing at 62, giving it that much? I should be relaxing on the beach somewhere. But you know what? 
That's all you know. You have to go there. It's my home. It's it's my church. And uh, you know, Savish. I worked with Savish for a couple of years. I mean, I'll I'll do anything for him. He's like my brother. You know, he, I said, tell me the time, tell me the day. I'll be here. We'll do it. You know, and it's all it's like being in the mob. You know, you get out. You, pretty sometimes you think, okay, now I'm a business guy. I wear a suit every day. I drive a Mercedes or something. You know, but you know what? You, you always go back home. You, you, you know. It's like you never, as soon as Brian Dobson calls me and says, Tom, can you come to my show? I need you to do something for me. I mean, because he's from the old days. I mean, he owns Metroflex. And all yep. that, you know. But you never get out of the mob. Once you're in the mob, life, you can't life. ever get out. And as much as, you know, and so I thought about this and I was talking to Arnold and some of my mentors the other day and they, they mentioned to me that you, ne you never can lose don't ever lose respect for where you came from that's the home that's your what your life springboarded from and when I when I think about that and I still get advice from my mentors absolutely I mean mentor figures are real important that's another thing we forgot about in life we all follow what everybody else is doing I'm waiting for the next Mr. Olympia to do something totally different everybody copied Dorian Dorian is a good friend of mine he was in every seminar I did in England he was in the back he didn't ever talk he would raise his hand occasionally eating every two hours I'm thinking who is this guy Okay, that he knew what he wanted. I offered, him, I offered him a quarter of a million dollars a year back in 1992 to come with the WWE. He goes, no, I can't, Tom. I, I believe I'm gonna be Mr. Olympia. I'm thinking, oh, I, I respect this guy. I like his decision. And sure, sure enough, we had no Instagrams. We had no mail, um, email back then. We had no internet. I sent him a telegram. Most people don't even know what a telegram is. I sent him a telegram and I said, hey, you did it. You told me you're gonna do it. Now, three years later, you did it. Congratulations. You know? yeah. But uh, we all are in a position to give back. I mean, money comes and goes, okay? Money comes and goes. I've had stupid amounts of money and no money and everything else in between. But the way you affect other people, that lasts forever. And finally, at age 62, I'm realizing it's not about the money. The money is nice, you can buy stuff, I like stuff, but it's not all about the stuff. It's about the love of the game and the energy that, that I got from my mentors that now it's my turn before I die, to pass it on. And if I don't do that, I'm, I'm remiss, okay? Wow. I have to do that. So whatever it takes to get that message out to motivate the 20s and 30 year olds to say, hey, wake up. It's not about what somebody's you know, doing, everybody else does, it's doing about what you wanna do. And you know, making it happen. When I first came out here, I know I, I can go on forever with this stuff, but I was an 18, 19 year old kid, kind of muscular, you know, 220 pounds and I'm, I'm a short, stocky kid, but I, I looked at Robbie and Arnold and Zane. They all had this style. They had this class, something that set them apart from everybody else. And I'm thinking, how do I do that? How do I become my own? So the girls taught me. And I was, how do I, I couldn't pose. I couldn't dance, you know? I was just like, bro, I could squat. And that's about it, you know? <laughs> and but they taught me to do things. The girls, the early female bodybuilders said, I like the thing you do with your hair. You know, I'm thinking, what do you mean? Tell me, teach me. And so they taught me how to really put a little finesse into my pose, how a stocky short guy could pose and still be kind of sexy, if we dare use that word. But you know what? Every time I went on stage, and I wanted to go on stage every five days. I probably should have stayed home <laughs> and trained for the Olympia and won, but then I'd be just another Mr. Olympia winner. I wanted to go, we had no Facebook. I had to go on stage every five days and travel to Europe for three, four months out of the year wow. to put this together, you know, wow. to, to be that guy. And I thought I loved it. I loved the stage. I loved wow. talking to 3,000, 10,000 people at one time by my posing, my posing is non-verbal communication, you know? And I, I used to love to have, it was almost like being the Beatles or being Elvis Presley, you know, you feel like, but then quickly I realized I'm not that guy, I'm one of them, they're one of me. But let me show you how it goes according to me. And people bought into that. And I think it's been some years now since I've been on stage. Of course, I've retired and it's now time for me to get back and say, hey, let's do it again. You know? Wow. And that's, that's why I'm here. Well, let's speaking about this. I mean, we're shooting this today and I'm sure a lot of people will see this piece, but I'm sure a lot of people will also say, you know what, I want Tom to come to my gym and, and do this talk. How can they get a hold of you? Well, sure, you can always reach me uh, at Tom Platts, at tomplatz.com. Okay, you can always reach me there. You can reach me through Savish. Uh, six six Packs Gym, there you, you know, go, Culver City. You can always reach me here. Uh, but I'm, I'm available on, you know, I'm, I'm doing things. Would you go? Yeah, if someone wanted you to go? Yeah. Oh, good. I mean, if, if we want to share you with the world, man. Again, you know, the world's been good to me. I got, I got a gift. Okay, we all have a gift. We all get a gift. 
we all had a talent or something. I, you know, I, when I was nine years old, it was, it was between playing music on my guitar. I played lead guitar, and I realized that I wasn't that good. I wasn't uh, Eric Clapton. It was between building fast cars in my garage, 427 Hemis, and I didn't have the, really the knowledge or the money to do it. Bodybuilding was the cheapest thing to do back then, you know, and it would give me the, the ability to go on stage and to train and utilize my attitude. Uh, now bodybuilding is the most expensive thing, it seems like, doesn't it? You know what? You can't buy what I'm talking about. Uh, you, can, you can talk to others and get it from others, and that's what we talked about. It's not about what you take, what you eat, you know, and I think, I think most bodybuilders eat too much. Everybody's, everybody's getting that puffy look. That's why you don't see. Uh, I'm looking for, again, I'm going to end with this, the next Mr. Olympia who does something totally different than Dorian did. Everybody copied Dorian very, quite successfully, right? with all due respect to all the great champions since Dorian, but the next guy I think is going to do something we haven't seen yet like Dorian did. It's going to be like, oh my God, I never thought of that. That's what I'm waiting for. How am I going to see that before I die? And I, I, I have an idea in my head what it's going to look like, but it's not just going to be a bodybuilder who doesn't talk and who eats 10, 15 times a day and weighs 270. It's going to be more than that. It's going to be somebody like Arnold who can talk and entertain and laugh at themselves and be a person too to motivate and inspire others. That's why we're here. We're not here to... Who has the most stuff and the most money doesn't win the game. I thought that was the answer for a while. And when I had the most stuff and the most money, I wasn't the most happiest. I'm the most happiest when I'm in my element talking about how I got there. Even getting there. So you win the universe, you win the Olympia. Okay, fine, what's next? And even now at the Mr. Olympia, everybody's like, oh, freaky, honey, great, let's go to dinner now. Back in my day, it was like the Beatles and ah, people were rushing the stage, security guards, baseball bats. <laughs> it was like we only had 3,000 people in the audience, you know? And that's what I miss. And I think we have to not only affect us, my job is not only to affect the bodybuilding community, my, my, my job is to affect others within our community to affect the world at large. Because what we do here in, in the gym is, is a wonderful thing. It gives you life, it, it, it motivates you, it opens you up to do many other things. And it's the same energy that works here, works everywhere else too. And that's my message, awesome. you know? Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you.